I bought a used guitar and it turned into a project. Let's work on it together. This Cordoba is hopefully going to be a gift. It was purchased, used, so I expected these two guitars to be identical except for the woods that they were made out of, only in this case. There are uh, differences that I did not expect. First of all, the nut width on this is full-size classical two inches. It's more narrow on the Mini M. There is no uh, truss rod going through here. When we take a look at the Mini M, we've got a truss rod in there. don't know if you can see it, but you use an Allen wrench and you can move the guitar neck and adjust it for any bows that might occur. So it's not going to be possible on this one. And also, the neck is narrow. It is not a full two inches. They have the same number of frets going across here, and they both have this bridge. So we've got... Okay, little muted sounding, might improve with strings, and the frets are very sharp. So in trying this uh, guitar out, when I first got it, I ended up looking like I had used razor blades on um, uh, the knuckle of my hand. That is since healed. It's been a couple days ago, so we're going to fix that up at this point. This one, here's how it sounds. So we're getting a different sound. At first, I was disappointed. I thought this one was brighter, uh, more fun. Wished I'd been able to get that new instead. Uh, also, this did not come with the case. Not happy about that. So I'll show you the case solution that I've come up with. And hopefully we can make this guitar giftable. Let's work on it. Okay, so now we're going to try these pins here, see if we can get them out. Mm, they are not interested in coming. Okay, so we're going to try a different way. See if we can get them out this way. And that's working. Yeah, so this long nose pliers thing is not my favorite technique for this. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have found a tool that will adapt to and allow you to remove oversized pins from an instrument. Okay, that one came out. Nope. Don't take them out. I'll take them out, okay? Thank you for your help, though. Thanks, Wally. Yeah, Wally, you're a good helper. Now, these strings have ball ends on them. First hint that this is going to be hard. Some of them come straight out. Some you have to pull out from inside the guitar. So it looks like there's a little pencil notch on this, so it must have been adjusted at some point, which is fine. All right, so it's clean inside. There's quite a bit of echo. Echo, echo, echo. That's cool. First thing we want to do is clean this guy up. We're going to do that with some preservation polish. It's no, uh, no silicone polish, and it will clean it and shine it. So this polish is really cool. You can use it on furniture and everything. It's really formulated for uh, instruments that maybe don't already have a high gloss finish, but I'm not so sure it's made anymore. I had gotten it from Stu Mac, uh, but if you can get a hold of it, it works pretty good. Okay, I'm actually seeing a little bit of a shine now, so just a milky coating. Even though it's not a gloss finish, you put a shine on it. You can see by getting all that extra wax and everything off of it that's been sitting on there. But 
So I've had more success with boiled linseed oil on unfinished wood like the neck and the bridge than I've had with lemon oil. With lemon oil, sometimes it will uh, shrink the wood and dry it out even faster. So uh, let me know in the comments what you guys use and have had success with. So this instrument had a pretty good uh, fret balance here. There was just one uh, fret bar that had raised up a little bit, and you could actually visually see it, and it went down uh, pretty easily with just a little bit of a tap. So wiping down the neck before and after you do a little bit of fret finishing uh, seems to help. The wood gets a chance to be hydrated a little bit, while it's getting some attention and uh, doing it before and after uh, seems to be sufficient. Won't get any buildup and it'll be nice and clean. This kind of minor fretwork is so much easier than you might imagine. You want to be delicate with the fret ends. Use a small file and just very lightly, you'll be surprised how little effort and pressure is needed to make these fret ends smoother and make your instrument so much more comfortable to play. Up on your higher frets you want to be very cautious that you don't hit your soundboard uh, with the file. You might want to put a little uh, piece of tape there to make sure that if you do bump it you don't leave a divot, but once you get the hang of it, uh, it, it's actually pretty easy to make sure that you're not hitting that wood. On these smaller instruments, you might also find that using a series of micro sanders uh, cross the frets holistically after you've done this uh, maintenance for fret sprout uh, will help polish them and, and keep them nice and smooth and comfortable. You can use a little piece of masking tape as a protection when you're first learning to do this. There's the test. All right. Yeah, it looks good. All right, other side. I only sacrifice the sides of my hands on the uh, side of the instrument when I'm really sure I've gotten it pretty much where I want it to be. That's your final test. Clearly this is too much excitement for one video. Join me in part two where the adventure continues.